Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Ms. Saima Parvez Ahmed here and today I am going to explain you about homeostasis in animal. I have already discussed with you about homeostasis in plant in my last lecture. So this is a zoology portion of your book uh, from the same chapter which we will discuss today. What is homeostasis? The word homeostasis arises from two words home, the place to live and stasis to maintain. So according to definition, Homeostasis is the process to maintain the internal environment of living organism. How any organism can maintain the internal environment? By maintaining the body temperature, body pH, body salt, uh, cell, uh, salt requirement and other all the processes which occur inside the body. If I am giving you an example, so for the, for the maintenance of homeostasis, organism use different kind of uh, procedures uh, to proceed them. Like we are saying in nervous system, there is a receptor control center and effectors are there. Receptors are there to collect the information. Control center take an action on it with the help of effector. So by the, this passage, any organism can maintain the homeostasis in their body. We will continue it, it uh, in the next slide. After discussing the term homeostasis, now we will discuss how any organism can maintain its internal environment. For this purpose, organisms have various aspects of homeostasis, which we have cl classified into three categories. The first one is osmoregulation, Th second one is excretion, and third one is thermoregulation. What is osmoregulation? Osmoregulation is actually the maintenance of internal water balance and water content of living organism. According to definition, you can say it's a regulation of so solutes and gain or loss of water. Regulation of solute and gain or loss of water and you all have to know when we are saying gain or loss of water, it means the solvent gain of and loss. Okay? So the mechanism of regulation of solute and gain or loss of water between the organism and its environment is termed as osmoregulation. We can say it is the process of maintaining a salt and water balance inside the body of organism. And when we are discussing about the human beings, so kidney are the main kidneys are the main osmoregulatory organs in human body. The second one is excretion, which is also an important aspect of homeostasis because when uh, any organism maintains its internal environment, there is uh, the production of some waste product which must be removed from the body. For this purpose, the removal of harmful, harmful waste substances from the living body is called excretion. The third one is thermoregulation. Therm word arises from the heat, so maintaining the maintenance of internal body temperature within a tolerant range you all have to know that some organism are warm blooded and some are cold blooded organisms warm blooded animals are those they maintain their internal temperature while cold blooded organisms are those which do not maintain their internal temperature and their body temperature vary according to its environment so every organism have a specific body temperature for the maintenance of this body temperature the process they use is termed as thermoregulation Osmoregulation in terrestrial animal. To maintain the constant water balance is the key of success of survival for the terrestrial animals because they are losing water already with the process of evaporation and the loss of water which cause dehydration in them because we all have to know the terrestrial animals live in a dry places. So, uh, to the maintenance of water balance inside the body of organism is quite important for them. How they release the water? Most detached animals lose water by evaporation from respiration, uh, process of respiration and body surfaces, excretion in the form of urine, urine and elimination in the form of uh, feces. So, these all are the processes they are using for their survival and uh, th which may cause the dehydration. To avoid this uh, dehydration, they maintain their water balance in the body and for this purpose, they are using different strategies to maintain it. The first one is waterproof body covering. 
what is meaning by it waterproof body covering waterproof body covering which make the these organism to uh, reduce the external reduce the loss of water from the body surface uh, of these organisms like uh, reptiles birds mammals they all have a waterproof covering which is known as keratinized epidermis right this keratinized epidermis protect them which is made up of a cuticle protect them from the loss of water the second one is use of metabolic water uh, use of metabolic water some mammals like camel kangaroo rat these kind of mammals make use of these uh, waste water during the breakdown of food and breakdown of body fats after that the third one is storage of water storage of water you all have to know that mammals uh, have some urea in their kidney which help them in reabsorption of water so these all things are help them to maintain their water content inside the body with respect of these contents they all have a amniotic cavity what is amniotic cavity this is cavity which is present in the mammals and uh, it protect the embryo of a mammals uh, because it's a water filled cavity and provide moisture to the eggs and young ones of the organisms and hydrobiosis it's an ability of organism to tolerate dehydration for a certain period of time not all the time to maintain or tolerate the dehydration process for certain period of time this is called and hydrobiosis so these all are the different aspects which help arthropods or terrestrial animals to maintain their process or their body osmoregulation or you can say to maintain their water content inside the body osmoregulation in aquatic animals how a cryptic animal maintain their osmoregulation while well, they already live in a water so the first thing come in our mind that they already live in a water so there isn't any loss of water required in their body but they have some uh, issues regarding their maintenance of osmoregulation we have categorized these organism into two categories the first one is fresh water animals the second one is marine water animals fresh water animals fresh water fishes they have a high salt concentration in their body and they should maintain it because if they lose uh, the salt or they take in too much water which dilute it so uh, this uh, factor may cause the death of these organism so mostly they expel the water and retain salt in their body to maintain their osmoregulation process and maintain their water content it sucker in a fresh water animal while in marine water animals they already live in a salt water so their body fluid contain less salt concentration according to their environment so marine water animal adopts different kind of adaptation to maintain it and it's easy for them to survive in a marine water according to this we have categorized uh, these fishes into two categories bony fishes and cartilaginous fishes bony fishes constantly lose water through their surface by osmosis body surface uh, by osmosis and cartilaginous fishes mostly cartilaginous fishes maintain low internal salt concentration than that of a sea water so these all are the mechanism these uh, fishes use to maintain their osmoregulation excretion in hydra and planaria hydra which belongs to phylum nodaria and planaria which belongs to phylum platyhelminthes both are invertebrate and they proceed the process of excretion by different uh, excretory products and excretory organs first we have discussed about excretion in hydra hydra uh, the excretory product of hydra is nitrogenous waste which is in the form of ammonia almost all the cells of hydra are in direct contact with water because hydra live in a water it's a water living organism so ammonia is removed by its body which is its excretory product removed by its body by the process of simple diffusion from the external surface or as well as internal surface so excretion in hydra is very simple the excretory product is in the form of ammonia which is removed by simple 
diffusion. The second one is excretion in planaria, which is a member of uh, phylum platyhelminthes, and uh, all the flatworms are there. Excretory organ in planaria are protonephridia. Protonephridia, what are protonephridia? They are also termed as flame cells, right? Because uh, when they are looking like just like a flame, or each flame cell is hollow inside the bears or tuft of uh, consists tuft of cilia. You can see here. So during the movement of excretory fluid, water is being reabsorbed, reabsorbed if required by the animal, and the rest of the excretory fluid released from the body of an organism through the form of urine. In all this process, these flame cells are quite active, which help them to remove the excretory product from the body of an organism. Each flame cell consists of a nucleus, cytoplasm, and internal cavity, and a group of cilia, which I have already mentioned, a group of cilia which perform the movement like a flame. That's why it is termed as flame cell, or you can say them protonephridia. So we have already discussed about excretion in hydra and planaria. Excretion in earthworm and cockroach. Earthworm, which is belongs to uh, phylum Annelida, while cockroach belongs to insecta, right? It includes in insects. What are the excretory products and excretory organ of these organisms? First, we have discussed about the earthworm. Earthworm is having a metanephridia as an excretory organ. These metanephridia, which are arranged segmentally in each segment, you can see it here. These all are covered with <coughs> these all are covered with capillaries, which help them to absorb the waste product and release from the body. These metanephridia have two types of opening: internal opening and external opening. Internal opening is termed as nephrostome. While external opening is termed as nephridio pore. From this external opening or nephridio pore, the urine is passed out from its body, which contains different kind of excretory products. So, what are the excretory organ of the earthworm? Metanephridia. These are present in each segment. It consists of a two opening: internal, external. Internal opening is termed as nephrostome, and while external opening is termed as nephridio pole after that cockroach cockroach which belongs to a class insecta it consists of a malphigian tubules you can see it here with the help of my pointer these malphigian tubules these malphigian tubules help them to excrete the waste product from their body uh, these arises from uh, the junction of midgut and hindgut and help them to excrete or discharge the waste product which are in the form of uric acid from the body collected in our rectum and then released from the body so excretory organs of uh, earthworm are metanephridia excretory organ of cockroaches are malphigian tubules which release the excretory products from the body by the passage of rectum clear about it beta we will continue the uh, process in the next class slide excretory products of animal as we all have to discuss about the process of excretion in different organism like hydra cockroach planaria and earthworm now we will discuss about the excretory products of animal uh, mostly it is based on amine group or nitrogenous basis Mostly the excretory product based on amine group and we have categorized into three categories. Either it's ammonia, urea and uric acid. Ammonia is excretory product of animals like bony fishes and aquatic animals. Urea is excretory products of mammals, amphibians, shark and some bony fishes. While uric acid is an excretory product of birds, reptiles, insects and snail. What is the difference between ammonia, urea and uric acid instead of their structure? Ammonia, first one is ammonia. It is a nitrogenous waste which is highly toxic. And if it is remain in the organism, it may produce some swear issues. So every organism which having which are having an excretory product of ammonia, its toxicity is reduced when dilute, when they dilute it with a large quantity of water. 
and its removal is also required a lot of water that's why it's an uh, excretory product of aquatic animal they already live in a water second one is urea urea is less soluble in water and it can be tolerated by an animal so organism like mammals in which we all are included they cannot afford the lots loss of lot of water during the excretion so this nitrogenous waste in the form of urea easily released from the body the third one is uric acid which is excretory product of birds reptiles and insects it's a, a comparatively large molecule based structure as compared to urea and ammonia and it's required atp or in energy to remove from the body right beta these all are the excretory products ammonia urea and uric acid excretion in men after discussing the stage process of excretion in different organism now we are moving toward the process of excretion in men in uh, human being there are different excretory organs and we have classified uh, classify them into accessory and main excretory organs accessory excretory organs are lungs skin and liver while main excretory organ is kidney which maintain the osmoregulation and eliminate the nitrogenous waste excess salt and excess water from the body how these organ accessory organs participate in the process of excretion if we are discussing about liver liver is a large reddish brown glandular structure it produce a bile bile is a secretion which release from the uh, liver and uh, which contain different kind of enzyme um, particip to participate in the process of digestion and the waste release from the body uh, instead of as liver is also excrete nitrogenous waste bile pigments and other harmful substances skin how skin participate in the process of excretion skin excretes salts and some other substances in the form of sweat glands or sweat precipitation how lungs participate in the process of uh, excretion the exchange of gases are taken over there and the waste uh, the gases which are harmful for uh, for the body release from the lungs clear kidney are the main excretory organs while these all are the accessory organ we will continue the actual process of excretion in human being in our next video in next slide or next presentation i will continue the excretion in human so if you have any kind of query you can ask and comment uh, on my video thank you so much